kind of a really a culture, right, where we are blending um, mindfulness with business with creativity. So I'm I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've been entrepreneurs since I was 20 years old. I was still in university, um, and I was working in the sports photography industry. So my boss at the time, you're like, wait, didn't you say you're an entrepreneur? I got to that. So my boss at the time, um, we went to take pictures of like little kids playing baseball, like all-star kids, and soccer, and hockey, and the parents would just buy all the pictures. Because it was like of their kid, you know, hitting the home run, like doing all that cool stuff. And I was like, they need something more. <laughs> so I created my first business, which was a custom sports poster design. So I would get like three or four pictures and make it look super cool. I would make the ball look like it was flying through the air. And that's where I was like, I know what freedom feels like. Because I can create my own uh my own money, I can make people happy. I knew nothing about yoga. I was 20, so I, yoga didn't enter my life till I was 21. I'll get to that in a minute. So my talk today really is about vision and freedom and what that represents in the way that you're showing up in your life and the way that you're showing up in your business and how that's making a contribution to the world at the end of the day. And as Evan said, um, I just hosted my, uh, my yoga expo, and that aspect of community is also what drives us to become more aware of how we impact each other. And as of right now, I would say that I feel really fulfilled with what I'm doing. How many of you guys could say, like, this is the shit. What I'm doing right now is like what I'm here to do. Like I feel like I'm part of like my dharma. That's awesome, right? How good does that feel? And who here is a in the creative world? And who here is in the wellness world? Okay. So there's such a beautiful marriage of how our creative expression can fuel the way that we show up for ourselves. And I was having a, a team meeting yesterday with, um, with my, my one person team, my other, my other person team. And I was like, all right, well, what's the vibe for 2022? Like, what's my core message for 2022? What do I want to bring to the world? How am I showing up? Because the first aspect of anything we do is the being. Who are you being? Right, the tagline of my business is be, create, inspire. So if you're not being, you can't do. But without doing, you're kind of like stuck, stagnant. Right? And as we know, what we just spoke about with Healy, with mindfulness, things have to move inside of us, outside of us. So my words for next year are evolve and amplify. Right? How are we evolving? What is the evolution of ourselves that's helping us take the next step, reach our next goal, or um, find the next connection point? So who are you being is my question for you. Who are you being throughout these challenging times that some people have faced? Like for me, the last two years have been the biggest blessing. I had a baby girl, um, so I've been in like full motherhood. It, my business grew like quantum leaps and I'm just in a state of like massive gratitude and also in humility, right? But who am I being? And the way that you connect to that aspect of you, which like really lives around here, like our soul, by the way, our soul's like this big and it lives right behind the heart. That's in yogic uh, philosophy. Um, who are you being in your soul? Right? How are you relating, again, to yourself? How are you relating to others? How are you impacting the world with kindness, with humility, with generosity? How are you being gracious? In your business especially, for those of you guys who are entrepreneurs, you know that if you ask too early, there's going to be resistance. 
But if you give generously, people are going to be filled with like, oh, wow, man, that girl's always giving. Amy's always giving, right? Kelly showing up always with like generosity. So they're more likely to buy from you. But if we're always asking of things, even of ourselves, that almost like creates walls that you hit. So as my entrepreneurial journey started when I was 20, I then met yoga when I was 21. I was dating some crazy musician, I was still in college, and he was like, you should go to this class. And I was like, what is this yoga thing? I don't, I was like a athlete, but not really. I was also, I also really liked to party. Uh, <laughs> so I was an athlete. I would go out like dance, you know, till like four or five in the morning, Miami girl. And I went to this yoga class and first of all, I was the most inflexible person. Like if you could see the poses that I can do now, like I was like, you want me to do what? And then I saw people like on their heads and I was like, I don't know about this thing. But because I'm also an overachiever, I was like, I need to touch my toes. <laughs> and the concept at the end of class, after I got my butt whooped, was laying there and being with myself, as we know if you've ever experienced Shavasana, was like, <sighs> I had never done that. I had never meditated, I had never experienced stillness. So fast forward 20 years later almost, because let's see, that was 2041. So yep, 20 years ago is when I started practicing yoga. I've pretty much allowed that sense of yogic being to infuse everything I do. And you're like, well, what do you do? Evan said, right? Like, I'm kind of, a, I'm, I'm a unicorn. That is what I do. <laughs> uh, we decided this yesterday with my team of one. I was, Yasmin's like, you're a unicorn. I was like, I am. Damn it, that's so good. So that's going to be in my new business card. Um, why am I a unicorn? Because I'm a Gemini, and I have all sorts of skill sets. I'm a problem solver, I'm a creative entrepreneur. So for probably since 2005 to 2017, I ran two very different lives. I worked in the creative advertising industry during the day, and then at night and on the weekend, I taught yoga. Because I loved, I went to college for graphic design, so I'm a trained graphic designer, marketer. And so I always worked in that industry of, you know, making things look cool, helping people uh, launch brands. But I was like, I really love teaching. Maybe I also just really like telling people what to do because when you're a yoga teacher, you're like, point your right foot there and people do it. You're like, that was easy. <laughs> so about five years ago, when I, um, I owned a yoga studio and I was miserable owning a yoga studio. It's a terrible business model. I don't know if anybody here like knows about the yoga studio world. You make no money and you work harder than you've ever worked before. So I was miserable um, because my number one value is freedom. And I was working till 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night inside four walls. This is also why I had quit my first advertising job, my second advertising job, my third <laughs> advertising job because I don't like working for other people. I don't like being at a desk where I can't just get up and take a trip. And literally, that's almost why I got fired the first time. They were like, you need to tell us like two weeks before if you need to take a vacation. I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> I'll make sure of that next time. But so I was miserable working at my yoga studio. Um, I also had business partners. I don't know if any of you guys have ever had business partners. It's like you got married really quickly and you're like, oh my God, trying to figure it out. So it wasn't working out. And that's where I went to a conference called the Women's Success Summit. And I went in yoga clothes and everybody else was like decked out in professional attire. I was like, okay, maybe tomorrow I'm gonna not wear flip flops and Lululemon leggings. <laughs> um, but the woman who turned into my first business coach started saying things like value and purpose. And I was like, what are these words that she's saying? Because 
again, I had been a serial entrepreneur. I was a freelancer. I wasn't a business owner, right? I didn't consider myself a business owner. Not even when I owned the studio, not even when I was leading retreats all around the world for people, not even when I was, you know, a fully like just a creative. I wasn't a business owner. I was a freelancer. And I was like, huh. And then she said the word leadership. I had never considered myself a leader. Again, owned a yoga studio, 20 something teachers, number, you know, number two in Miami at some point. We got awards, all the cool stuff, yoga expo. I always hid behind because I never wanted to show off, show like, be too big. And that's when my husband, who came with me the next day, was like, babe, was like, what? You should do what she's doing. I was like, I can't do that. I don't know enough. I'm not. He's like, yeah, you do. And that's when I decided to fuse my two passions, which was entrepreneurship, creativity, and in the middle was wellness, right? Because I was a health coach, all these things. So I grabbed everything and I went, Whoa. because what does yoga mean? Anybody? Union. And finally, about what, it's going to be five years now, I felt one. I didn't have like one foot in the creative world, like, you know, freelancing for people and one foot being like this, like yoga rock star. I was like, okay, I want to help others do what I do. Or really, I want to help others become what they want to become, not do what I do. Erase that. You can delete that from the video. <laughs> and that's where I feel like once you figure that out of like, am I in my dharma? Am I in my purpose? You become more peaceful. Right? There's less noise going on in your head. There's less um, doubt. You're not uh, second guessing yourself as much. Because you're always going to second guess yourself, I think. Right? That's what makes us evolve. So it's evolve and amplify. Who are you being? What are you creating? So 2022 is a great opportunity for us to start something new. And why do I say 2022? Because it could be any time. You could do it today. But, you know, it's the holidays. And like I, Chloe was mentioning in my mastermind group that I run, that's what we're planning right now. We're working on what is 2022 look like. So I wanted to take you guys through a little um, future vision exercise today that I love to do. And just see what that looks and really feels like for you. Because if it doesn't feel good, then it's probably not the thing. And you don't have to figure it all out, but at least feel something and see where your subconscious takes you. Um, and I've done this exercise mainly with, uh, you know, wellness, holistic women. A few weeks ago, I did a, I don't know what I did, really. I went to the beach um, and did a talk for a bunch of sales professionals. I don't, that's what I did. And, and I took them through this exercise, and it was probably 12 men and one woman. And it was such a cool response. So I'm excited to do this with you guys. And for that, I'm going to sit. I will not flash you. <laughs> All right, so we're already grounded. So allow yourself to just be comfortable. Like really, if you even wanted to like lay down, you could. And so just be comfortable. Let your hands do whatever they want. You don't have to be you know, in a perfectly seated meditation. But let's take a deep breath together. And allow yourselves to just let go of the extra thoughts that are in your mind and picture yourself in a beautiful field. In this field, you feel and you see the air gently moving, the grasses, the flowers. And you're walking on a little path. And just taking your, your time, allowing the smell and the wind to 
touch your face, and you're walking. And it starts opening up, and you see a river. And you walk towards the river. And there's a dock. And you feel compelled to walk towards the dock where there's a boat. And on the boat, there's a very friendly face, older gentleman with a white beard. And he kind of gently invites you over. So you step on the dock and you walk. You feel the wood creaking, the river underneath. And then you step onto this boat. And it starts drifting down river. And you look up at the sky and there's some seagulls and it feels very freeing. And you are looking towards the horizon and you see another dock. And you momentarily arrive there and you You notice that the captain is saying, hey, hey, come on. This is your stop. So you get off the boat. He lifts you. And you take your step onto this dock and you walk down another path. And the views change slightly. The path is a little bit more solid. And you walk and you find a gate. You open the gate. And then you see a house. You walk towards this house and you see this beautiful door. And look at the door. What is it made of? What's the color? How big is it? And you knock. And the door opens. And you're kind of looking down. And as you look down, you see feet. And you start moving your gaze up. And you see you, your future you. And she or he says, Welcome, I've been waiting for you. And you look into your future self's eyes and you embrace. And just notice what you, your future you is wearing. What your future you smells like. And you're invited into this beautiful home. And you step into the foyer. And you notice that feeling of home. You look at the floor. What is it made of? Notice the decorations. You step forward into the main living area, the living room, dining room. And just take all the sights in. All the furniture, the couch, the light fixtures, the color on the walls. And you see there's some windows, and you look out the windows. What do you see? And since you're home, you start 
looking around. You're going to start exploring and you walk out of the dining living room area into a hallway. And on the hallway there's some images, some pictures. Who is in these pictures? And as you step through this hallway, you go into the kitchen. And there's this beautiful kitchen. And you look at the cabinets, the countertops, the stove. You, of course, look out the beautiful window. And you feel very happy in this kitchen. You start walking and you see the little like dining nook. You see some more pictures on the wall. And then you step through a doorway into the family room. And then you find your office. What does your office look like? You see the books on the shelves, your desk, your chair. You see your computer. You go towards the computer and on the screen there is a, a bank balance. And you look at that number. And slowly you just take a moment to go ahead and take the last gander around your office and back into the hallway. back towards that living room. And your future you is there waiting for you and says, this is all yours. This is what you've worked for. I hope that you're happy. And you know it's time to go. You give yourself a big embrace. You walk back towards the doorway. And you step out back and towards the path. And as you're walking, you take one last look behind you at this home, this beautiful house. And you walk back towards the dock where the kind captain is waiting for you, invites you back onto your boat and upstream the river where you allow yourself to just let it all sink in through your little voyage into the future. And you arrive back onto that dock where you step off the boat and back into your field, where you take one more last deep breath. And then you open your eyes. So this is where I open it up um, for maybe one or, one or two of you who want to share like what you saw, what that looked like for you? Were you surprised? Anybody? I'm like, now I want you to share, Jenny. <laughs> you don't have to share. I'm just kidding.
Anybody? There, thank you. Uh, so I'll try the whole thing, but I found comfort in seeing myself uh, when I opened the door. There was something in my eyes. It was like loving kindness. Um, it just kind of made me feel all right. OK. Were you like at the house that you see? I didn't see, I don't see things in specific details. OK. So Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. I love that. Thank you. Anybody else? Evan. I actually felt. Uh, anybody is familiar with Zelda? Yeah. I actually felt kind of like I was <laughs> going through Zelda, and like it was like a very charming, peaceful. And I felt very, very calm, very. All right. Anybody get like shocked at like their bank statement or how much? See, you saw water. Yes. Did anybody see maybe something different than water? Like, what was the picture of? Well, you did water. What was the the view outside the window? You were also water. I was also water. You saw mountains. Yeah. Right. So it's it's interesting where the subconscious mind takes you, um, and I love this exercise because it it really does allow you to create and it's not you really creating it's just what's coming up all right you have a blank slate you have a paintbrush a magic paintbrush um, and did anybody at some point like if you looked at your bank statement or you did you like edit it because I've done that before like It just seemed so unreal, but then literally, I almost very quickly reinforced, no, look at where you are. So where I was, the visualization of where I was, the number actually made sense. Ah. But I wanted, I, so it's almost like I had that battle, but because I could visualize like this amazing Moroccan style villa, with, like, like almost ceilings like this, it, it made sense. And even almost to the point where when I came to the door, Charles. I love it. I, I see this for you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Boom, boom. Yes, yes. Um, because if I really think about it, my mom was the first woman to go to university, to work, because my grandmother was a stay at home mom and she was cared for very well um, but on my my dad's side my aunt also stay at home mom so like I'm almost like first generation I can be a boss and be super successful because my mom like did well but like in the corporate world she never you know went up to her potential I gotta talk about and uh, in a kind loving way so that was really important to me. I was like, I can break a generational pattern 
and be a role model, not just for others, but also to my daughter, right? So ask yourself, like, are you playing to your potential? And if you haven't figured out what this looks like for you, what is your potential? Because I feel like at that Women's Success Conference, um, and I say this with kindness, like uh, Michelle, my, my previous coach, kind of like knocked me over the head and not necessarily to me, but what she was saying. And I was like, I guess I can do more stuff. And ever since then, I've written a book. I'm a published author. I've doubled my income. I've created online courses. Like nobody told me that I could create an online course before. I was, she was like, hey, you could put together an online course for your, um, you know, your clients. And I was like, I can do that? Right? Like you can. That's the thing. But maybe you need somebody to show you to hold you by the hand, even if it's for an hour or maybe for six months or a year. But like, who is your mentor? Who can help you do the things you want to do, figure out when you're stuck, make sure that you're not your own roadblock. And I'm, I'm doing this like very deep work right now on a, it's like a 20 something page document where like I'm going into the psyche of my ideal client and like going over their roadblocks and their obstacles. And it's like, but as, as I'm doing that for them, right, this ideal person, I'm also seeing it for me. So do some of this work, this like foundational work that really helps you overcome your goal, not overcome, achieve your goals. So if your goals are, I want more time, well, what does that look like? How are you going to free yourself of doing all the things? Or I want more money. Well, are you looking to add another revenue stream? Are you looking to, I mean, what's the quickest way to make more money? Anybody? Yeah, just charge more money. That's it. You could have the same amount of clients. You could charge $5 more. Magic. You just made more money. Okay. So there's so many different ways that you can perhaps circumvent the hard and like er way and just get to something a little bit faster. So B, create and I'll make sure that you're inspiring yourself and you're inspiring others in the process because this is karma. We're just creating a ripple effect in the world. One smile at a time, one kind word at a time, one small gesture or maybe a huge gesture. Um, so I invite you guys to to join me on that journey and seeing what this looks like for, for next year. And if I can be of service to anybody here, if, if you are looking to you know, have some help, like I said, I'm a unicorn. I do a lot of stuff, but mainly I help you reach your potential. Um, I help you make more money and do it in a way that's fun. And I tell terrible jokes, so you might laugh at some point. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it for me today. Thank you, guys.